Hi, good morning. I feel like the color looks weird today. I'm wondering if it's my camera. Do I have something to wipe it? Maybe it's just the, <laughs> okay. Hi, Sarah, how's it going? Are you um, enjoying this rainy weather? I hope it doesn't storm while I'm doing this. And I hope that my internet connection stays Stays good today. So I realized, I realized. Last week I said everyone's buying a puppy. Haley's got a puppy. But I also like talked to a neighbor and she's buying a pool. Um, and then I saw a couple pools in my neighborhood that weren't there a week ago. So I think everyone's buying a pool. Um, totally rainy. Um, so I am excited for this challenge today. It's something a little bit new for me. I tried it out yesterday and it was really fun. Um, so I hope that y'all enjoy it today. What we're gonna be doing is painting um, the pages of a book or a magazine with our hand holding it. Um, so it's not just that we're reproducing what's on the pages, but we're also trying to get like the object of the book when we're page when we're painting. That's how I'm going to be working today. But if you want to work from a photograph, if you want to take a picture of your hand holding the book, that's fine. Um, I think like when I worked on this one yesterday, my hand looks a little bit funny in it, but. That's part of it. Um, we're gonna actually start with a few sketches and just like some contour drawings and studies of our hands holding books, and then we'll move into the paint. Um, so if you wanna take a couple of minutes to just find something to work from, a magazine is fine, a calendar, some kind of brochure. I'm choosing this book. Um, I'll just talk about why, because I'll give you some time to find something if you want. Um, but I got this book at the Cloisters in New York City, and um, it's about this artist, Maria Savella Mirian, who drew in the 1600s. She was a German um, artist and she, and botanist, she's not botanist. What, what is the scientist that um, studies insects? She collected caterpillars and observed them and drew them. And she drew them like um, changing into butterflies. And she was one of the first people to do this kind of like time, like it's almost like sequential art. She was one of the first people to show like the, all the stages of the caterpillar and butterfly in one painting. And her, her style was like sketching and then watercolor. But I just thought that was really cool that she would like, I'm trying to find an example, but she would draw the eggs of the caterpillar, um, the cocoon and the butterfly. This is sort of an example of that. Like, there's the butter, or there's the caterpillar, there's the butterfly, there's like, right there is like the, um, I think when it comes out of the cocoon. Anyway, I just think it's really interesting. I think she's really interesting. And um, I have a caterpillar phobia. That's why I have this. <laughs> 
just full disclosure, um, I think I'm getting better. Like I no longer walk and like freak out every time I see a caterpillar, which it used to be that way. So um, I try to like in order to deal with my phobia, I try to confront it. I'm not ready to live with caterpillars, but um, this book was a good start uh, for me. So that's why I'm going to work with this book. But um, go ahead and find something, some kind of book or magazine that's enjoyable to you um, that maybe has some nice illustrations or photos in it and text as well. Now you can work flat if you need to um, and rest your hand on the book if you want. Um, since I'm going to try to have you see what I'm doing, mine's going to be a little bit more awkward. But um, I thought what we could do before we get into painting is just do some contour sketches. Um, and maybe overlap them because it could be a nice way to sort of show a movement a little bit. So I'm going to start with just putting my hand on the cover of this and sketching that. And I hope you all can see this. Let's do that. So that right there is a little landscape that I've constructed from paper that I'm attempting to paint and it might become one of our painting assignments in the future. Okay. So I'm just working with different markers and these are just gonna be studies. I'm not going to probably turn this drawing into a painting at this point, but just we'll take like maybe five or 10 minutes to just do little studies of what it is we're working on, just to get comfortable and familiar with it. So I'm gonna start with the cover and my hand on the cover. And again, just doing a contour drawing. When I do a hand, um, I kind of just separate it into the three little segments, the digits of the finger. And I'm gonna start with the hand and then do the book underneath it. Again, with the contour drawing, you're not trying to get the shadows, but more like the outlines of shadows and highlights. And I'm going to try to get like the spine <clears throat> and the actual form of this book.
This is fine. Hello, thanks for being another interesting city. Oh, you're welcome. Alicia. No, Alicia. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to try it with the book open and me holding the pages. I really like this with um, the artist's portrait. So I want to get that with my hand. I might even try to hold it like this. <clears throat> and I'm going to just go right on top of this because it, it could actually make a nice movement to overlap these. I use my pink paint marker. Okay. And I'm, I'm basically doing these studies just to see like <laughs> what's going to be the most comfortable, what's the most interesting for me to draw, what do I want to try doing, like investing the rest of this time doing. Oops. <sighs> yeah, my, I can already feel my arm getting like tired. <laughs> If you're resting your hand, it's probably going to be a lot better. I'm going to try one more study before I get into the painting. Because I kind of want to challenge myself. 
and do like a half where I'm seeing two and the page in between. I'm going to just see what that's like. And I also have to think like, how am I going to make this comfortable for myself when I'm painting? This might work. Hi, Connie. Glad you're here. So just uh, if you came in late, we are painting or we're going to be drawing and painting um, our hand holding a book or a magazine. And it could also be resting on the book or the magazine. And I'm overlapping them because A, um, I don't really want to use up all the paper. <laughs> uh, B, because I think it can be kind of an interesting um, movement if to overlap them like this. Kind of gives this um, movement of flipping through the pages. Um, so that's, that's another reason. I thought I would try it this way. But I'm going to take one of these poses that I'm trying out here, and that's what I'm going to do for the final painting. I mean, if you like this overlap thing and you want to just continue working this way and painting this, that would be really cool also, I think. Hi, Joanne. Okay, well, I think I know which one I want to try for my painting. Um, I'm going to try the last one, even though you can't really see it here, but I like the challenge of it. And quite honestly, it's like the easiest in terms of <laughs> resting my hand on the book. Um, so that's what I'm going to do for my painting. And if anyone came in late, I'll just show you again. This is um, what I did here, um, working from this book as a little study yesterday. Um, and this is where you might go today um, or not. But what, something I want us to think about when we're working today is to try to get the form of the book 
the curvature of the book. Something I can critique about mine is that the text should actually be slightly curved to look like it's curving around the paper, which I didn't do here. And also I just like hand wrote in like with a little calligraphy pen <laughs> with my like funky handwriting. Um, but if you want to try to copy a text font, please be my guest. Okay, so I've already prepared a piece of paper for myself. And since this is watercolor paper, I decided to tape down the edges um, of it. Now, I'm going to draw first. And I think for the drawing, I'm going to use charcoal again. I just like that technique a lot. Um, all right, and I have to get this <laughs> set up in a way. I'm going to have to make this a little bit smaller than real life. Sorry, you can't see my hand in here, but. Something that I really like about drawing from life like this, especially when, I mean, it sort of feels like an endurance <laughs> project, um, but I do like some of the awkwardness that happens this way, as opposed to copying a photograph. This is a bummer here. Okay. Yeah. 
So sometimes, if I'm not sure how to draw something, I look at the negative space. And I think I've talked about this before. The space in between the fingers, um, the space, you know, around the hand. Um, that really helps. Trying to assess how big the hand is in comparison to the book. Okay, <clears throat> for me, since this is getting in the way of my, um, the book is getting in the way of my drawing, I am actually going to take my phone <laughs> and just take a picture that I can refer to at times. Because um, I'm going to want to move that. Oh, even that's hard. I have that if I need it. Okay. And now I'm looking at it. All right. I really kind of like the sound of the rain <laughs> right now. It's very soothing. All right. Two thumbs. Just move up. Oh, this would work so much better. Resting it on my lap.
this woman, Maria Sibella Marion, is that she um, traveled a lot um, to paint, to study and paint butterflies and caterpillars in other countries. Um, Suriname, I think, is one of the places she went. Um, she also taught um, watercolor. And I think like she would do, often she would do her sketches and then her students would color in her sketches, which I think is cool. I guess that was pretty common too. But yeah, I really like this little book. My problem is there's a, a lot of typos in it. <laughs> and I just, I don't understand that. Okay. I hope that you all have found a cool book to work from also. Okay. All right, so I have a fully loaded palette here. I'm gonna start painting. And I'm gonna approach this carefully, probably a little bit more like a watercolor, even though I did charcoal, so that's gonna blend in with the paint. Um, but I'll just take up like a little chunk at a time. So yeah, I've got white, yellow, alizarin crimson, burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and dioxazine purple today. And I also have some orange. So I'm kind of just curious to see, like, if I just paint right on top of that charcoal, it's going to blend in with my paint. Usually I use a little bit of um, acrylic medium first to blend it, but I kind of, I'm interested in having that black charcoal um, mix in today for some reason. Maybe because it's raining, I don't know. I kind of like it sometimes. And you know, I know a lot of you have taken my classes and you know that I don't like to use black in my classes, but for whatever reason lately, I'm really enjoying <laughs> using black in my pop in my paintings, like on my palette. Yeah, maybe it's, I don't know. I like that it, it can kind of tone the colors down and sometimes I just am in the mood for that as opposed to like super hyper saturated colors. Um, so. Good morning, what a great idea. Thanks, Charlotte. It's definitely a challenge. I haven't done this before, but I do. <laughs> it's been really fun. I think certainly like having a book that you like uh, is good. And I think this is the perfect day for thinking about books and curling up with a book.
Yeah, so the drawing is still showing through with mine, but I like that. I tend to like that look on paper a little bit more than on canvas, but um, yeah, that doesn't bother me. But if, if it, it bothers you in the future, just do a lighter line on your drawing. I'm actually going to refer to my photograph for a second here. This would be an interesting challenge to paint yourself holding your phone <laughs> of your photograph of the book. Very meta. One time, um, if you if you came in late to this, I was explaining earlier that I have a caterpillar phobia. And one time my husband um, thought, you know, we could do immersive therapy and buy some caterpillars. Because you can buy caterpillars and like observe them changing into butterflies. <laughs> So he went to the page to um, look at the caterpillars and I couldn't even touch my computer. I was so freaked out. <laughs> and that's when he decided and we both decided, no, that's probably not a good idea. Okay, I'm just going to leave this here for a minute and come back to it. I'm going to go ahead and start plugging in other aspects of this. So I gotta get back to my pose here. I'm gonna just start putting in, I have some leaves here. I'm gonna start putting those in. Just blocking them in. Um, a bunch of years ago when I was living alone in my apartment. Um, in the middle of the night, I heard my cat just like jumping around wild, wildly. And I was like, what are you doing? And I turned on the light and she was batting around something and I thought it was something she got from her litter box, if you know what I mean. And I get in close and it moved and I freaked out because I knew it was a caterpillar. I locked myself in the bathroom and she was out there <laughs> flinging it around the apartment. It was, it was truly 
Um, <laughs> it was like a nightmare. And I had to call someone to uh, my, I had to call my husband, who is not my husband at the time, to come and save me. <laughs> And he did. And that's when I knew I really had a problem. So yeah, lately when I'm taking walks, I've been seeing caterpillars, but I haven't been jumping. I haven't been freaking out as much as I have in the past. So I'm hoping I'm getting through it. But if any of you were in the Northeast of gypsy moth infestations, play, like plagues, like they were everywhere. They were in the pool, they were in the, um, on the tennis courts, on your car, on the lawn, absolutely everywhere. And it was like, I was, it was formative years for me. I was like, you know, five or something. And yeah, that's where it all started. Kids would like throw them at each other. Sorry, I'm getting too graphic. Uh, kids would like put them on their tongues. Ugh, it was so gross. Okay, I'm gonna stop. So yeah, I'm just plugging away. With all of the elements of this page. Plugging in the little um, illustration I'm seeing here. I'm going to try to get the curve of that page a little better. And I think I am going to use a little um, glazing fluid, glazing medium, fluid medium. Really tough. Okay.
realizing I need to push the entire portrait over a little. Enjoying the rain in the air. I know the rain is actually really nice and soothing today. I like it too. Like I said earlier, try to get the form of the book. Even if you're doing this flat, um, maybe there's some pages you see. Cover. I wish I had just started this with it leaning on my lap, resting on my lap. Um, something else about butterflies is something I read from this book is that they were thought because they because caterpillars could change into butterflies 
they were considered like somewhat sinister or like um, of the occult, like witches were butterflies or butterflies were witches um, because they changed so easily. And um, some and the butter they would get in the butter and milk. They're getting to milk and cream. And so that's why they called them butterflies. Um, or they called them butter, hmm, can't remember, but in German it's um, Schmetterling. And Schmetter was a word for cream. Which I thought was interesting. Go in a cocoon and they transform, they turn into a liquid. <laughs> they like completely go, they liquefy and then they take on their butterfly form. Okay. So my page is like a slightly off yellow here. So. Or I should say it's an off white, slightly yellow. They are pretty magical. I know they are. And that's why I've always wanted to get over my caterpillar thing because I really like butterflies and it's the same creature. I think I'm getting over it. I think it may have just lightened. Um, We might be getting cut off if it does, but there's only a few minutes left until um, 12. So there's a little bit of a shadow where my finger is resting on the page and I wanna to try to get that also here. And the page, this page, since it's curving, there's a slight shadow here. So I'm gonna to try to go slightly darker. I'm gonna add just a little bit of purple, teeny tiny bit of purple to my off white, yellowish thing, because purple is the complement. Um, I'm seeing a very, very slight, might be too early to put this in, but it's like the white of the edge of the page. I'm gonna try to get that in there. And the 
back side of the page I want to get. Not sure. I'm going to refer to my photo. So I hope as we bring it to a close today, um, please send me anything you make. Even if you've, you're working on stuff from, you know, a couple weeks ago, I would love to still see it. I still post things um, on my blog just as a document. I think it's good to just have a record of it. Um, so please send me whatever you do. Um, and I also post my finished things on there. I try to. Um, sometimes I paint over things before I get it. I remember to take a photo of it. So I don't have an image of everything, but most things I do. I have to push her face over. Um, so I'm going to kind of ignore my... drawing here a little. This is what I love about acrylics. You can just paint over things very easily. We should do a painting assignment where we work from one of these classical portraits. Maybe that will be our next, maybe next week. Just back off from portraits for a minute, but next week we'll work from one of these classical paintings. That's a good exercise, definitely. I like to kind of jump around with subject matter because I feel like it's like doing exercise. Like, you know, if you just do the same thing over and over, it can get kind of rote and it's good to challenge yourself with different things. So that's why I kind of jump around a little bit here.
I'm doing like the comic book version of her face. Honestly, for a second here, I couldn't remember if it was Monday or if it was Thursday. <laughs> ah, all the days just kind of blend into one now. So I will be back in a couple days with a new assignment. Not sure yet what we're going to do. I'm going to save this classical portrait painting for next Monday. Please send me whatever you do. I'd love to see what it is. I love seeing everyone's paintings so much. Um, so I am going to log out of here pretty soon. I'm going to keep working on this, but for the most part, I kind of have like the form down, what I want to do. Um, her face is, you know, I need to work on that because I kind of shifted it last minute. Um, but I'm just going to keep going in now and doing darks and lights and getting, um, the different details, um, of what I've got here. Um, but I look forward to seeing what you're doing. Um, if you have any questions, I'll just hang out for another minute or so. I think there's a little bit of a delay on this. Um, and as always, thank you everyone for your support. It means a lot to me. I didn't talk about text. Um, with your text, you could write in your text um, with a pen. I have a calligraphy pen that I used um, or take a teeny tiny um, paintbrush or just imply it. Um, whoops. <laughs> with mine here, this title here, I just kind of implied it. Um, I mean, you can see it. And I got the big, uh, what I, I forgot what this is called, the, the first initial there. There's a word for that. But I got that in. Um, and then the rest I just like wrote out with my hand. Mailing address. I like to come with a hand with the book. Great drawing challenge. It is a good drawing challenge. For sure. Um, thanks. Lisa. Um, okay. Uh, um, uh, Alicia, if you're talking about a mailing address, like where to send um, your photograph, you can, or your painting, you can send it to my email account, which is UrsulaGullo at gmail.com. Um, if you want my physical address, just send me an email and I'll send that to you. Um, but otherwise, everyone, thank you. I, this is a little funky. Stay tuned for the blog when I post everyone's drawings and I will put my finished drawing on there. I promise. Um, and I think that's everything that I want to say. Um, it's great hanging out with you guys. Enjoy the rain. And I will see you in a couple days. I'll see you on Thursday. Love you guys. Thanks so much.
Bye.